Hey guys, so it's early spring out here in South Texas. Everything's greening up nicely. What I want to show you is back off there in the distance, that little bit of white. Now that is something truly amazing. And if you live out here in the Southwest, perhaps you visited the right time of year, you've seen these things. They're all over town, all over the country, but I guarantee you most folks have no idea what they're missing out on. This is your yucca in bloom. Now you've seen me make soap out of the roots, cordage out of these beautiful spiky leaves, but if you show up out here in the spring, you're going to encounter these giant towers of flowers, these pillars of blossoms. If you can get to those, especially when they're fresh, without getting stabbed, which is the trick, each one of these flowers is very crisp, very edible, and it's a treat. Now they kind of remind me of cucumber. They're very fresh, very crisp, and you can eat those raw. But definitely check them for bees and moths, insects on the inside before you pop that in your mouth. But something everybody ought to try. You can saute them up as well. Not only will you get all these flowers if you show up at the right time, but inside of this pillar, you have a structure that's holding it all up. It's got a big stalk up to three inches in diameter, which is a lot of food. It's kind of like a squash analog. You can uh, bake that in the fire, kind of like a uh, ear of corn, or dice it up and saute it. However you like your squash, this will cook up about the same way. You want to try a yucca blossom huck? Okay. It's definitely a carnivore. I call these little guys yucca asparagus. They're still young, a few more days and they'll blossom out. But if this is all you can find and you're hungry, you can harvest these, dice them up, cook them a little bit. They taste great as they are. Now this next part requires me to get a little cozy with yucca. Now, this is the one I've chosen. You can take these even before they bloom out. They look like asparagus, those cook up real nice. This one's got some young flowers on it. Just gives me something to snack on while my yucca stem is cooking in the coals. This is what we were after. A good 10, 15 pounds. Probably closer to 15. And check out the size of that stalk. It's absolutely massive. It's going to be good eating. It's time to go ahead and uh, Get a fire started, get this on to cook. There are a few things that we can collect along the way that will make this meal even better. One of which is wild onion. See down here. Now these little white flowers are popping up everywhere out here. Now the onions were here before, but it makes it really easy once you get these tiny white flowers appearing everywhere. Dig them up, it takes a little bit of work, but they're calories and uh, they taste really good. Make all kinds of things taste good. One thing to remember when you're messing around out in this part of the country, beautiful white bowl right there and clean it up, is that onions smell and taste like onions. So if you're not sure, wild garlic, wild onion, it tastes and smells like an onion, you have an onion. And a lot of folks get these confused with what's called crow's poison, which is right here next to another onion. And if you break the stem, the stalk, the leaves, it smells like chemicals, nasty, nasty stuff. This is wild onion, this is crow's poison. Again, taste it, smell it. This smells and tastes like onion, this does not. You might think you've hit onion gold, but you need to make sure that what you have is actually onion before you go chop it up, throw it in some food, and waste your meal for the evening. Also a few pieces of green mesquite that I want to go ahead and collect and make utensils out of. It's going to make cooking a lot easier.
home sweet home. Plenty of firewood. Got some stuff to get that fire started. We'll get to cooking. Y'all wanted to know how I did this part? I used an ugly stick, which is a piece of uh, wax jute. I take my striker, feather out my jute, and I place that directly behind the striker. So as it goes down the ferro rod, all of my sparks go exactly where I need them. Our fire started nicely. We're gonna go ahead and do some food prep before our coals are ready to cook on. Now, first step is gonna be taking these blossoms off. Now, I told you earlier that they are super edible uh, without being cooked. This is what they kind of look like up close. Absolutely gorgeous flower. It kind of tastes like rose petals or cucumber. Uh, very crisp, but uh, much thicker than a rose petal. And as her just absolutely gorgeous, beautiful, awesome. No discoloration. As the blossoms get about three or four days old, they start to discolor and the taste turns uh, bitter. But you can enjoy them all day long. <laughs> Sorry, I'm gonna go ahead and eat while we're doing this. But the idea here is that uh, it's food on the go if you want that. And you can always pull off the blossoms you want from the yucca without taking the whole stalk if all you want is a snack. Now what we're going to do a little bit differently here, is if you've seen this, I've got some cast iron. And I'm going to add some butter, no I'm cheating, some wild onions, and a whole lot of blossoms. So we're going to have a yucca saute along with uh, yucca stalk bake. So we're going to go ahead and uh, open up each of these blossoms, take the leaves off. This is uh, not just for making sure portion sizes are small but you want to make sure that there aren't any bees or insects inside of each one of those blossoms because uh, you'll only make that mistake once. At this point, we're running out of skillet room, which is not a bad thing. We still have lots of flowers left. 
Uh, we'll go ahead and cut those away from the stalk. I'll put them off to the side so we can get this thing baking. Go ahead and cut this into three sections so we can lay it down in the coals once those are ready. Got through pretty nicely though. Go ahead and set these over the side while we wait for our fire. Put our skillet up here and finish up a spatula. Huckleberry. Coyotes are fine. Leave them alone. a little rough not bad for a five minute bush spatula made out of mesquite that ought to work oh, fire's burning down got a few coals we can push around and make work for baking our yucca Move them where we want them. That mesquite is very, very hot. Ooh. Uh, depending on the heat, about 10 minutes on a side. It's going to bake like a potato, like a squash. A little easier than a potato. It'll crisp up real nice. Cleaned up, good to go. Take them off. Add them to our meal. A few chives work. And a little bit of butter. A lot of butter. Kind of depends on where you're from. Welcome to Texas. Just about ready 
Yep. Go ahead and flip. Looks good. Real good. Looks like ears of corn cooking. That sounds, it smells amazing. It's looking real good. Want to brown up just a little bit. Still a little crisp. Plenty of butter though. I imagine a few of you are wondering if I made a mistake by putting a larger rock back here in the center as opposed to this shorter rock right here. And that's actually for a really good reason has to do with heat dissipation. As that heat comes up, it travels on out and away from me. If you spend enough time around a campfire, you find ways to uh, not bake yourself. So even though this handle's right here and it is metal, I can still put my hand on it. Works out really well. Now, your skillets only have so much versatility. They work really great for a lot of things, but this also allows me a heat gradient. So uh, down here low, not much heat, mid temps, hot spot on top, and you also have a grease catch there on the bottom. So, lots of little reasons. Tricks are good. Our yucca blossoms. Just about ready. That brown up just a little bit longer. I think our first bit of yucca stem is ready. And the way that I know that is because I felt of it just a moment ago. It'll actually be a little squishy. Yeah, that's baked nicely. Push the other ones into the cold a little bit more. They ought to all be done in just a moment. Looks done to me. One way or another, it is time to eat. Go ahead and take that off the heat. Pull our two stalks. Still on the fire off and let them cool down for a little while. Well, our taste testers here, and I wish y'all could smell this. These stalks, these yucca stalks baked up in the fire, smell just like uh, walking into the fair. The sweet corn that they'll bake on the cob within the husk, smells identical to that. Uh, over here with the sautéed yucca flowers, it smells like uh, pretty much popcorn, buttered popcorn from the movie theater, maybe buttered noodles, uh, definitely butter in there. But we have a lot of food. It's time to go ahead and see if Huck approves. You ready? All right, so we're gonna try the noodles first. These are gonna be the uh, flowers, covered in butter. Do you want some of these? Okay. Didn't even, he didn't even smell them. He just ate them. And it's a mess out here. But, what does it taste like? Uh, cabbage, sauteed cabbage, uh, asparagus, kind of like egg noodles a little bit. Slimy texture, buttery, crisp, uh, maybe spinach as well. So this is really awesome to go with all kinds of stuff. Throw some eggs in there, make eggs rancheros. A little bit of picante would not go awry. Uh, this is definitely some trail food that I would eat a lot of. One more bite. Hmm. I'll put this to the side. 
that we can dig into those stalks. You gotta wait for a little while. Not yet. Not yet. All right. So we have three pieces of stalk right here. Obviously, the ones that are thicker take a little bit longer to cook. I'm gonna try the mid-sized one right now. Got a little bit of give on it. And we'll slice into it. Now, I bake these. A lot of times we'll dice them up and we'll cook them like squash, uh, either baked in chips uh, or fried or put into a stir fry. See how easy that is to cut through? It's already pretty easy. Cut some slices off. Here we go. You ready to try this? And this has not been seasoned at all. Sugary sweet this time. Okay. Not gonna do it. Sure? Not gonna do it this time. He likes that butter, but. Hmm. This is neat because this is the sweetest one I've ever had. This is almost uh, like candy. Um, baked sweet potato, uh, butternut squash, very sweet, a little bit of crunch, crisp, kind of like a, not sure, a bite into a squash that has a lot of sugar in it or syrup on it. I have never had them this sweet before. Now, one thing that's interesting with these stalks, and it's taken a while to figure out, is that all the sugar is in those stalks. All the energy that those flowers need is pushed into the stalks immediately, within a week. Uh, a few years ago, we actually cut uh, several of these when we were pickling and doing all kinds of stuff, one of the stalks got set aside. I don't like to waste things, but uh, it went to it went to waste. Uh, the flowers had already been opened up and pollinated on it. Nothing else was done. The stalk was just there, the entire thing off on the side. We came back three weeks later, and the flowers had actually matured, and the entire pods had been developed, seeds and all without the plant, no, without any roots, no vascular system, just uh, the stalk and the flowers that were left. And that was, that was absolutely fantastic to find. So uh, kind of neat. If you have animals that eat the pods, eat the flowers, if you're out there surviving and really competing against nature, might be an option to go ahead and collect the flowers up while you can and uh, do with them as you can. So. There's a lot to do with yuccas uh, as they develop and we make the pods, as the pods dry out and they make all the sugar, we make some cool desserts with that. And eventually, at the very end, in a few months, the idea is to go ahead, collect a bunch of the seeds, grind them up, and make some truly Texas native bread, which uh, ought to hit the spot, okay? It's better than cornbread in some ways. Well, it depends on how much cornbread you've eaten, but Guys, I certainly hope you've learned something in this video today. Excuse me eating while I'm talking, but please like, subscribe, share videos like this. If you like the channel, check it out. Tell your friends. If you love Huck, he knows. He's too cute for that. But uh, thank y'all so much for watching. And until next time. Oh, but you'll come back for more of this, will you? Okay, you gotta work on this champagne lifestyle. Make sure you're eating your greens. Okay, that's about it. That's all you get. Butter and some of the other stuff in there is not good for puppies. Glad you like it though. 
A hidden benefit to these yuccas are that they're one of the first things to flower out each spring, and they're a large flower, which means all the bees that have been living off their honey all winter long, the stuff that they've got last summer, are going to be ready for some fresh food. As they come in, as they leave, start watching. You'll see a pattern. You track those bees back, you're going to find yourself some wild honey and beeswax. For those of you wondering about wild beehives and wild honey, we've got a hive right back here in the knot of that dead old tree. Now it's full of bees right now. They're starting to wake up, move around a couple weeks into spring, and it ought to be overflowing with honey. Now we're going to show you how to get at those, how to smoke them out, how to get the uh, honeycomb, the wax, and all that sweet stuff without all the tools and hopefully without getting stung. We'll see.